Hi, Neil here again, and it's time for another crash course where we take a look at your fails and try and help you out, try and save you some skin. Right, to the first victim, and this is Mark, riding a trail that I know well, actually, I recognise that of you. This is up in the Longmind in Shropshire in the UK. Uh, so here we go. Uh, check out the cockpit on this bike, it looks a bit unusual. You can see, actually, big cross rut and big old crash. What I've just noticed, this is actually a tandem. So Mark is riding, it's called a Ventana El Conquistador de Montanas, and it is a tandem. I mean, I really will struggle to give you any advice because I've ridden Martin's tandem and I don't know how to ride a tandem. Uh, it was pretty clear that I didn't know how to do it because it was very scary. Martin was controlling the bike, so sorry. Getting cross ride on a tandem, I guess you're never going to be able to lift the front wheel up. So if you're on a normal bike, I'd say just lift the front wheel up and hopefully you'll get out of it, but it's not going to happen on tandem. So I don't know. Go steady. Okay, this one comes from Will, riding his stumpy uh, in North Manchester. He says he found a really steep ridge line and couldn't leave it unridden. It looks really cool, actually. It looks super steep. Uh, the sort of trail I really like riding. And you can see, really tight corner. So as he comes in, the front wheel just tucks. It's so tight. You get a horrible feeling of the front wheel just going like, down you go. Uh, so in this case, you've just got to really try and open that corner up as much as you can. It's super tight or sometimes you can actually use a bit of back brake and skid the rear tire to get the bike cornering but that is super committed because you're on a steep bit of trail once you do that and you're sliding you know you're sort of almost out of control and hopefully you're gonna get back in control and get to the bottom of the corner maybe not actually there's another angle of this if you watch the pov you can see how tight it is so it doesn't look like you can open this corner up on the way in there's no real way of getting any wider so in this case i would say maybe try an endo so you're actually using a bit too much front brake to pick the back wheel up and turn it around again super committed because you're on a steep trail and you're actually going further forward towards over the bars so you've got to do it and get ready to come off it straight away but just trying to get the rear wheel light and get it kicked out and get around the corner this one is a cracker. It's from Matthew at Windhill Bike Park on this very jump. Now we've used this video all over our social media because it's flipping impressive. It goes boom, the bike explodes. Uh, Matthew says he got a bit cocky and went too fast. This resulted in a broken collarbone, oh dear. But conquered it a year on on my new Canyon Talk. So yeah, this is the jump. This is a hard one to judge the speed for, definitely, because it's bigger than it looks in, in real life. You know, this is a big old jump. That takeoff is really tall and really steep, and you are stepping up to quite a big landing, but going too fast wouldn't be good because it's a big old jump. You rock it into the sky and overshoot it, it's probably not great. But because the takeoff's so tall and steep, you are going to lose quite a bit of speed going up it. So the risk of going slow and casing, like someone has, look, they've probably got away with it. I wonder if that was Blake, he did a video, video here the other day. Um, so, judging the speed, I mean, ideally, if there was someone else here that was doing it, you could just watch what they do, follow them in, but there isn't always gonna be someone here doing it, so then you've gotta take a pretty good guess, and that's when all your jumping experience is gonna help you out. So, hopefully you'll get it about right, but it does come from experience. I wouldn't say to anyone who's new to jumping, just to come in here and have a guess. From experience, I'll tell you that actually, this running is pretty good. So you just start from by the tree and don't pedal and that will be enough speed. Um, another problem I see actually is you jump a bit off the side of the jump because you can see when you land, the bike just explodes. It looks like the wheel and also looks like the bike twists over. Um, so yeah, jump straight, I guess. To try and stay looking up the takeoff so you don't compress or turn off the side. But getting it straight and getting the right speed is going to be key, and it's not that hard a jump, to be fair. Uh, so today's conditions are a bit sort of sloppy and a bit muddy, so I'm thinking I'm going to go to about here. It is quite hard to tell, to be fair, this jump. And roll on in, no pedals. Let's see what happens. Oh! <laughs> Too slow. Mm. Ow. I was actually at the bottom of the takeoff then thinking, this feels too slow. Bit faster. Mm. 
Yeah, bit of a tailwind actually now. Yeah, bike perfect, nice. This one is Paul uh, riding a Knevo Expert, and this is in the Forest of Dean, riding some off-piece stuff. He says he's riding down some of uh, those off-piece trails and had a lie down, all good, no damage to bike or rider. So this is a big old compression. You can see a steep roll in, uh, the weight goes forward, and you see it's super slippery. You've got all those uh, leaves on the trail, so you can't see what's underneath there. It could be a case of there being a root. Um, but also it looks like you're turning in. So this is quite a good one here. Uh, it's kind of steep, there's a bit of compression at the bottom. So you always try and roll in straight because if you have to turn in the bottom when you are compressing, then there's a good chance you could slide as well, which is what happens here. So try and get a straighter line in. Um, but if it looks to me like when you hit the bottom, the fork goes really low. It's kind of hard to see, it's quite dark, but it looks like it almost bottoms out. I know you're riding a Knevo, which is a, an e-bike, so it's quite heavy. So you might think about wanting to put a bit more pressure in that fork to make it a bit harder or add in a volume spacer, which means that the further you get into the travel, the harder it gets to compress. So it, we call it ramping up. So that means that you might end up staying about there rather than going all the way in. Because what happens when it goes all the way in is all your weight goes with it and it sort of exaggerates what's happening. So I would check your sag and I go for about 20 to 25% on the fork, a bit more than that on the back, but this is the fork we're talking about. So basically uh, roll along, check your sag. Maybe if that's about right, think about adding a volume spacer. I actually reset my sort of rubber band, my sagometer before I did that. You can see I probably used about, I don't know, 75%, 80% travel there, which to me feels about right. It's not a super heavy compression, so I'm saving the rest of that for those bigger ones. So I reckon it's probably set up about right. Right, to check your fork sag, just sort of reset that rubber ring down to your fork seal, and then you want to get up on the bike. What I do is roll along really slowly, stand up, and just get my shoulders level with the bars, so you're in that sort of attack position. Your fork should sag in a little bit. Then roll back, try not to touch your brakes, definitely front brakes, it'll bob the front wheel in. And then, looking for that rubber ring to be about 20 to 25%. So mine is 22%, Right, right. This is Mark in Cagayan de Oro, Philippines. Uh, newbie here, trying to learn jumps. Guys, I have a wish, can you grant it? Please, I'm a big fan of Blake. Can you ask him to shout out my name? Mark Casas! Yo! Mark! Right? There you go. Uh, it looks to me like the crash could be caused by maybe a bit of a turn on the takeoff. Uh, looks like it probably hurts this one, to be fair. Uh, or it could be a little bit of a slide, but either way, try and stay as sort of straight as you can on a jump, but also try and just use your body weight centrally above the bike. If you start pulling with your arms to take off, that's when this can happen. So, nice one. Mark Cassas! But keep practicing, and I'm sure you'll get better soon. That's it for this edition of Crash Course. Keep sending your crashes in using our uploader. Uh, the link's in the description down below. We also share them on the Dirt Shed. Plus, you might even see yourself on Instagram on our fail of the day, but hopefully you don't hurt yourselves. Uh, loads more of these as well, so you can look in the playlist if you want to keep watching Crash Courses. Mark Cassas, yo!